Hello everyone, it's the Centralized Dave. Welcome back to my rebranded channel. In today's honest review, we're gonna talk about Radix. We'll have a look at the team. We're gonna talk about the white paper. We will have a look at the token and the prices. We're gonna see some of the videos from the Radix team and more. If that's what interests you, then stick around because this video is for you. I will, however, greatly appreciate any support shown to the channel, like subscribing, liking and commenting. It will all help me to push this and do this full time. Without further delay, let's start. I presume that most of you never heard of Radix and thus you are now asking the question, what is Radix? Let's have a look at my overview. Radix is layer 1, which is notable for, among others, their fully auditioned and official test, where they reached over 1 million transactions a second. That is, even though this test has been done some time ago, it's still a world record. And also keep in mind that there are few third generation uh, cryptocurrencies, such as Cardano, for instance, that have in their white paper, in a theory, that are gonna reach 1 million transactions a second in theory in the future. But for Radix, this is not a theory, it's a reality today. It's as a platform, it's highly buildable, it has high throughput and it scales very well and does not sacrifice security. Also, another thing which Radix is notable is their own consensus algorithm. They used to call it Tempo. I imagine in my simple mind, I imagined it as a version 1.0. Today, they call it Cerberus, which in my simple mind is version 2.0. It enables a large amount of parallel transactions. And now let's have a look into the team. In this video, we will have a look at the two main figures of uh, Radic, which is their CEO and their founder. Let's start with Pierce. Hello everyone, this is Piers Ridyard, CEO of Radix. Uh, just calling in to say um, it's been a fantastic 24 hours. Uh, the launch of the mainnet uh, Olympia went incredibly smoothly. Well, Piers is unusual kind of CEO to say at least. It uh, took me a long time to get used to him. Don't get me wrong, um, a CEO is usually a very tough business position. And Pierce is just uh, a little too nice, in my opinion. That, that was an in introduction, that you absolutely oh, bought Here we go. Me. From his resume, you can see that he was a CEO of Nifty, which is a company of 500 plus employees. So this is not his first experience of being CEO of a major company. Although you can also see from his uh, resume that he's a core developer as well, and that's a geek. And that's generally not what you want to see from CEO. However, after seeing of the extraordinary amount of work and love that he's put into Radix, I am a believer that he is the uh, right person in the right place. We want to stop climate change. You can create a DAO for that. You want to stop plastic in the ocean. You can create a DAO for that. And suddenly you can create social movements that have finance as part of them. And I think that's going to fundamentally change the world in, in, in so many big and small ways. And that's why I think crypto is such an interesting thing to be part of, because right now, every single person in it matters. In Radix, instead of the UTXO layer sitting on top of a blockchain, it sits on top of the Radix consensus algorithm, Tempo. Tempo is designed to work with sharded data. Through using UTXO, which can easily be sharded, Tempo can enable large amounts of parallel transactions. Now, Dan, the founder, UTXO that's a person that uh, I, in my opinion, is one of the smartest people in the whole blockchain space in the world. He definitely has the brain that can fulfill the vision, the extraordinary and very ambitious vision of the Radix. But as I'm gonna talk to you about the white paper in a moment, you will realize that all the vision of Radix is very tightly organized, structured, is very well thoroughly thought of, and I think that it is mainly Dan's contribution. From his resume, I actually see that he founded the Radix nine years ago, so it was quite a long time. 
as I've just mentioned, let's have a look into the most interesting and most catching crypto project white paper I have ever read. Now, to cover this white paper completely is, I'm afraid, outside of the scope for this video. Because it has taken me so much, so deep, this white paper was so catching that I just had to make a couple of A4s of handwritten notes, as you can see. But since I dove so into such a detail of this white paper, I'm gonna make another video where I'm gonna just cover just the white paper in depth. Today, however, uh, in this video, I'm just gonna go very briefly through the white paper and through my notes from them. Uh, Radix is removing the technology barriers, limiting the expansion of DeFi by building layer 1 to address the global scale it needs for 100 years. And that is a bold statement if I've ever, ever seen a bold statement in my life. <laughs> and even if that end goal, even if it's not gonna be fully completed, even if they address the global scale of DeFi for five years, it's gonna be monumental project because there is no other that addresses this. It's obvious that Ethereum can't do it. Ethereum 2.0 most likely will not be able to do it. And it's very centralized through Infura. The other third generation cryptocurrency is also unlikely. Maybe only what we call fifth generation cryptocurrencies, just like Radix is the fifth generation cryptocurrency. They can address the DeFi. At the moment, no one addresses the global scale of DeFi. Then they've invented, they have their own programming language called Scripto. Uh, it's based on Rust. Uh, they also do like uh, developer lawyer royalties. And that's going to be like first time like developer to developer marketplace where a developer, when you as a developer, you, you will get royalties if what you write is actually useful and is gonna be used by the others. The uni consensus uh, algorithm or protocol Cerberus, it provides the parallelization of simple transactions and also complex dApps through sharding. A couple of uh, main differences in Radix comparing to the other layer ones such as Ethereum. For instance, the assets in Radix are global feature. An asset on Ethereum you literally have to write a smart contract for that. Here, they are a global feature and they are treated as physical objects. For instance, there is this uh, concept of badges. That badge is, it also has a physical behavior like assets and that badge is used for authorization. So you literally swipe the badge and you get an access or you are rejected. Then they're working on this self-incentivizing developer ecosystem, as I've just mentioned, developer royalty system, based on the utility, right? And the first time in the history there is going to be developer to developer marketplace. Their servers, their consensus algorithm has a white paper of its own, but it also briefly, Cerberus is also briefly explained in this white paper. Each component, components in Radix are literally smart contracts. They call them components because they behave a little bit differently. And all its resources it owns is assigned to a single shard at any point in time. So I just wanted to give you the idea how everything is thoroughly thought of in Radix and planned and these guys, they know what they want to achieve and most importantly, how they want to achieve. As for the roadmap, it's so far the year where the Radix should be complete, completed. As you can see, the roadmap on their website shows uh, five major eras, so to speak. First, the Betanet, Olympia, Alexandria went live last year, the end of the last year. And the next one is gonna be Babylon. And that should be this year, should come this year. And now, I know you are all waiting for that. Let's have a look at the token of Radix and its price performance. The token is Radix. XRD is the main token, which is on current baby network of Radix. 
uh, although there is still ERC20 version of Radix token and that is EXRD, EXRD. So, uh, and you can bridge them. We can say that the, the total capitalization of both tokens together is roughly 1 billion, which makes Radix standing currently somewhere around 67th, 68th place which has to do with the fact that uh, Babylon is uh, yet to be released this year, which will bring smart contracts or slash components as they are called on Radix. Now let's have a look at the price action of the token itself. The token uh, you can buy it on KuCoin and Bitfinex. KuCoin has the bigger chart because KuCoin was the first exchange that listed XRD token and it's been on it since the summer last year. Well, so far it has been going completely sideways. It's reasonably, you can say on weekly, it's holding the summer lows. On weekly it is holding them. Although if the market should go down, it is definitely going to lose these summer lows. And inversely, if the current bearish sentiment that is at the moment in the markets if that makes investors to change their approaches if everybody capit uh, capitulates everybody goes short then i think there is also a reasonable chance that this was the bottom and that the market are due to bounce I mean, we have to be open-minded and open to everything. So that would be the token itself. And now let's go into my criticism. I have just maybe two points, maybe three. Okay, let's let's settle on three. So uh, point number one, the lead is too British. The lead is too British. I don't like that. I usually don't like when the lead is too one country. Uh, cryptocurrencies are solving global problems uh, with the power abuse and deception and these are global projects and that's why I would always love to see global lead not one country this is my personal opinion of course number two uh, huge huge thumb down for one fact you can buy EXRD on KuCoin without KYC if you so choose. Of course, there is a bridge where you can swap a EXRD for XRD, but you have to do KYC. So you always have to do KYC if you want to stake Radix and XRD token. That is a huge thumb down for me, actually. Point number three in my criticism part would be the communication of Radix. You know, the fact is that, that communication and the passing of the information to the world from the Radix team is, in my humble opinion, a little bit too heavy. Because sometimes just an easy question, their answer is just too profound and complicated and long. Good question. Um, and quite a long answer. Um, I'm afraid, everybody. Which is in contrast with their own old series called Radix Academy, where Dan was talking about core concepts of Radix in a very simplified terms. This is incredibly powerful as it guarantees that an unwanted state, such as funds being locked, cannot be reached. A good way to think of a state is to think of it like water. Water has a fixed set of states that it can be gas, liquid, and solid. There are also a set of transitions in between these states. Gas can become liquid, and liquid can become a solid, but gaseous water cannot go straight to ice without first becoming liquid. I can only wish that there is more of this joyful, playful passing of information from the Radix team today. As for conclusion for this honest review, while there might be bumps, bumps in terms of delays, in teams bumps, legal bumps, I believe there is enough brilliance in Radix to carry the project throughout all possible obstacles. I believe that Radix is due to a substantial growth in community and other metrics. This next one is a 4K version of that short movie that I've just been playing. There you go, so this is now 4K. Uh, 
so yeah i got quite a lot of um send and receive going on 